As the Prince of the Woodland Realm and a key member of the Fellowship of the Ring, Legolas's story is intertwined with some of the most pivotal events of the Third Age. Yet his journey extends beyond the War of the Ring, where he went on to achieve more great deeds. Though despite being heir to the throne of the Woodland Realm, he never took his place as king, instead choosing to rule another land. Today, we journey with Legolas, exploring his early life and pivotal moments, discovering the path he chose to tread after the War of the Ring. Prince Legolas Greenleaf, son of Thranduil, grew up in the enigmatic and dangerous realm of Mirkwood. Though much of his early life remains shrouded in mystery, we can infer a few things. Thranduil, his father, assumed kingship after Legolas's grandfather, Orifa, fell during the War of the Last Alliance. Legolas, being of royal lineage, likely received rigorous training in archery, combat, and the lore of his people. Despite his portrayal in the Hobbit movies, it is unclear if he took any part in the events at the time, or even how old he would have been, as Tolkien had not likely thought up Legolas's inclusion in The Lord of the Rings when he was writing The Hobbit. Despite his royal heritage, Legolas's early years are mostly unrecorded, leaving his involvement in significant historical events largely speculative. It's plausible that he witnessed the encroaching darkness from Dol Guldur and the rise of the Necromancer, later revealed to be Sauron. His father, Thranduil, had relocated the Elven Kingdom further north in response to these threats, a strategic move to safeguard their people from the growing evil in the south of Mirkwood. As a member of the Sindar, or Grey Elves, he would have had access to a wealth of knowledge and wisdom, passed down through the generations, as they brought with them the rich cultural heritage of Doriath and the teachings of the great elven lords of old. Legolas's journey takes a significant turn when he is sent to Rivendell to inform Elrond of Gollum's escape from Mirkwood. It is here that he joins the Fellowship of the Ring, representing the elves in their perilous quest. His keen eyesight, unmatched archery skills, and profound wisdom prove invaluable to the Fellowship. He navigates the treacherous paths of Caradras, defends his companions in the mines of Moria, and finds solace and rejuvenation in the elven realm of Lothlorien. As the Fellowship approaches Lothlorien, Legolas's role as a mediator and translator becomes crucial. His knowledge of the elven ways and his kinship with the Galadrim help ease the tensions within the Fellowship, especially between the suspicious Gimli and the cautious elves of Lothlorien. As the Fellowship bid farewell to Lorien, Galadriel, the Lady of the Wood, provides Legolas with a quiver of arrows and a bow of the Galadrim, which was longer and stouter than the bows of Mirkwood and strung with elven hair. When the Fellowship is ambushed by orcs at Amon Hen, he fights valiantly, his arrows finding their marks with deadly precision. Despite the chaos and confusion, Legolas remains focused, his keen senses alert to every danger. Yet, even his sharp eyes cannot prevent the scattering of the Fellowship. As Frodo and Sam set off alone, Legolas commits to tracking the uruk who have captured Merry and Pippin, joining Aragorn and Gimli in a relentless pursuit across the plains of Rohan. Probably the most surprising and important aspect of Legolas's journey is his friendship with Gimli. Initially, their relationship is strained, marred by centuries of mistrust between their races. However, as they journey together, they find common ground and mutual respect. This bond deepens after their time in Lothlorien, where they explore the forest together, fostering an unbreakable friendship. And it was in Fangorn Forest, when Gandalf the White first appeared, that he brought a warning to Legolas from Galadriel. Legolas Greenleaf, long under tree, in joy thou hast lived. Beware of the sea, if thou hearest the cry of the gull on the shore, thy heart shall rest in the forest no more. Gimli and Legolas's bond grew stronger as time passed, evolving into a deep camaraderie during their adventures. This friendship was particularly evident during the Battle of Helm's Deep, where they engaged in a light-hearted contest to see who could kill the most enemies, with Gimli emerging victorious by a narrow margin of 42 to 41. A pivotal moment in Gimli's life occurred toward the end of the battle when the Uruk-hai breached the keep. 
Gimli, along with many survivors, retreated through a narrow gorge beneath the White Mountains to the glittering caves. There, he was captivated by the cave's beauty hidden behind Helm's Deep. Gimli's passionate description of the caves left a deep impression on Legolas, who vowed that if they both survived the war, he would return to the caves with Gimli. In return, Legolas promised to take Gimli to explore Fangorn Forest. But it was at Pelagia, when Legolas journeyed with Aragorn and the Grey Company, that Galadriel's prophecy came to fruition. Never in all my life had I met them until we came to Pelagia, and there I heard them crying in the air as we rode to the battle of the ships. Then I stood still, forgetting war in Middle-earth, for their wailing voices spoke to me of the sea. The sea. Alas, I have not yet beheld it, but deep in the hearts of all my kindred lies the sea longing, which is perilous to stir. Alas, for the gulls. No peace shall I have again, under beech or under elm. Gimli lamented for all those left behind once all the fair folk leave for the havens, claiming it would be a duller world for those who were doomed to stay. Their friendship, born out of necessity and mutual respect, blossomed into one of the most enduring relationships in Tolkien's Legendarium. The pair's journey and subsequent battles strengthened their bond, transforming them from wary allies into inseparable companions. Legolas's willingness to embrace Gimli's perspective and vice versa represents a significant step towards healing the long-standing rift between elves and dwarves. After the defeat of Sauron and the coronation of King Elisar, Legolas does not return to Mirkwood immediately. Instead, he honors his promise to Gimli by visiting the glittering caves of Helm's Deep. In return, Gimli accompanies him to Fangorn Forest. But rather than heading back to Mirkwood to be with his father, who was still ruling in Mirkwood, Legolas's heart, however, is soon drawn to Ithilien, a land in Gondor that he and his followers transform into a verdant paradise. They plant trees, nurture gardens, and help rebuild Minas Tirith, bringing life and beauty to the war-torn region. For over a hundred years, Legolas dedicates himself to this endeavor, ensuring that Ithilien becomes the fairest country in the Westlands. In Ithilien, Legolas finds a new purpose. The devastation of the War of the Ring left many parts of Middle-earth scarred, and his efforts in Ithilien symbolize the healing and restoration that follows such a tumultuous period. The once barren lands bloom under his care, a living testament to the resilience and regenerative power of nature guided by elven hands. Under his guidance, the elves work alongside the men of Gondor, fostering a spirit of cooperation and unity that strengthens both communities. This collaboration is particularly evident in the rebuilding of Minas Tirith, where Legolas and his elves play a crucial role in restoring the city to its former glory, alongside Gimli and the dwarves of the Glittering Caves. The most profound change in Legolas's life comes with the passing of his dear friend Aragorn. Stricken by the mortality of his friend, Legolas decides it is time to leave Middle-earth. He builds a grey ship and sails west to the Undying Lands, a journey that signifies his departure from the transient world of Middle-earth to the eternal realms of Valinor. In a remarkable twist, Legolas does not undertake this journey alone. His steadfast companion, Gimli, joins him, becoming the only dwarf to sail to the Undying Lands. This journey not only fulfills the prophecy given to Legolas by Galadriel, but also symbolizes the enduring power of friendship that transcends the boundaries of race and tradition. As Legolas and Gimli sail into the West, their departure marks the end of an era. The bonds they forged, the battles they fought, and the lives they touched remain a lasting legacy in the annals of Middle-earth's history. Their journey to the Undying Lands is a poignant reminder of the enduring power of friendship, loyalty, and the pursuit of peace. Despite his royal lineage, Legolas never ascended to the throne of Mirkwood. Several factors contribute to this. First, his father, Thranduil, continued to rule effectively throughout the Third Age and beyond. There was no immediate need for a new king. Second, Legolas's heart was drawn to other pursuits, 
such as his role in the Fellowship, his friendships with Gimli and Aragorn, and his efforts in Ithilien. These endeavours reflected his commitment to broader causes rather than the confines of kingship. Furthermore, Legolas's journey to the Undying Lands with Gimli indicates a personal choice to seek peace and fulfilment beyond the responsibilities of leadership. Legolas's decision to focus on healing and restoration rather than rulership also underscores a fundamental aspect of his character. His actions are guided by a deep sense of duty to the greater good, rather than a desire for power or prestige. This selflessness and dedication to the well-being of others made him a true hero of Middle-earth. From the halls of Mirkwood to the battlegrounds of Middle-earth, and finally to the serene shores of Valinor, Legolas's journey encapsulates the essence of elven grace and resilience. His choice to prioritize friendship and the well-being of Middle-earth over personal power underscores the nobility of his character. If you've enjoyed this video and strive to be noble and helpful like Legolas, please consider liking and subscribing down below. Thank you.